Hey folks, I'm Red Monster SC, and in this video, I'm going to cover the limitations of rented ships, how that applies to the prospector, and how you can work around those restrictions when out in the field. So stick around to learn how you can turn a profit in a rented prospector. Mining can be very profitable, but it requires some upfront support in the form of a mining vehicle like the MISC Prospector. You can either pledge real money for one at 155 US dollars, buy it with in-game credits for just over 2 million UEC, or you can rent one for about 50,000 UEC per day. While renting a ship can sound tempting, and it's certainly more affordable than buying one outright, you are going to be limited to the stock components without the ability to change them. That means you also won't have the ability to change your mining laser or attach any mining modules. The Prospector can be rented at any of the refinery stations located at every L1 station and the HER L2 station. Use the interstation elevator to get to the refinery, head across the refinery deck to the service center, and the ship rental terminal will be on the bottom floor past the mining equipment sales area. Simply select how long you want to rent the ship for and confirm. Once the rental has been confirmed, the rented ship is going to be placed at your home landing zone, so you may need to claim it at the local station prior to heading out on your first mining run. You'll be stuck mining with the Arbor Mining Laser, which provides no benefit, no drawbacks, and has a middle-of-the-road power output. The two main limitations you're going to be working around are rock mass and material instability. For rock mass, the Arbor Mining Laser will struggle to fracture rocks at or above 5,000 mass without assistance. Surface deposits come in sizes between 3,000 and 8,000 mass, so there are going to be a large percentage of deposits you come across that you just won't be able to break without help. Asteroid deposits come in three distinct sizes, between 4,600 to 5,100 mass, and while it might be slow progress, you should still be able to fracture the 5,100 mass deposits on your own. For materials to avoid, quantanium and borase both have high instability, which will cause the charge level to jump around erratically. While you may be able to get the initial break on one of these deposits, the instability on the high concentration subfragments will be too high to effectively manage, and you're going to struggle to keep the charge level within the green optimal window. You're much more likely to overcharge the rock, causing the rock and maybe your prospector to explode, killing yourself along with whatever potential profits you might have already earned. That leaves behind the following tier 2 materials you should be searching for. Bexalite, Terranite, Laranite, and Agresium. For a full tutorial on surveying, check out the second episode of my mining tutorial series, which covers surveying on planet surfaces and asteroid belts. The majority of my advice from that video will also apply to a rented prospector. To begin surveying, press V to enter scan mode, increase or decrease the scan angle using the mouse scroll wheel, and send out a scanning ping by using the tab key. I recommend setting the scan angle to 180 degrees so that you're only pinging what's in front of you and you're less likely to get turned around and disoriented. Mineable ores will start to appear as a loose signal cluster at around 10 kilometers and then resolve into individual signals at between 4 and 5 kilometers. As you approach a deposit, you can hold the right mouse button to activate scanning mode, which should display the rock composition in the top right of your HUD. There's a current bug where scan results won't show all of the materials so you could instead switch to mining mode by pressing the M key and your mining laser scan will show all of the composition details. If you're surveying on a planet surface, any type of surface deposit has a chance to spawn with the materials you want, with the exception of quantanium deposits, which you should avoid because of the high instability. Nice, granite, and shale deposits have a chance to spawn with two of the desired ores, while other deposits can only spawn with one type. For asteroid surveying, C, M, and P-type asteroids will each have a chance to spawn with one of the desired ores and are worth stopping to scan, while you can skip over E, Q, and S-type asteroids since they can't spawn with any of the materials we're looking for and may include some of the materials we want to avoid. I will note that quantanium deposits can still be very valuable, so if you happen to find a rock with greater than 20% mass, or even a cluster of high percentage rocks, that information could be sold to a fellow miner. If you're not sure who to sell the information to, drop into the Red Legion Discord server that's linked in the description below, and one of our org members would be more than happy to send you a modest finder's fee. Like and subscribe now if you're enjoying this video, and leave a comment if you notice anything that isn't clear or might have changed in future versions. 
Now that you have a better understanding of the deposits you should be looking for, you'll need to find a location that's going to give you the best chance of finding the right materials in a manageable mass. The stock quantum drive on the prospector will provide enough range to get you anywhere within the Stanton system, but it's exceptionally slow and you could waste a lot of time in quantum travel if you choose to mine too far from your refinery station. If you're set on mining on a planet's surface, my recommendation would be the moons of Hurston, and specifically Aberdeen. You'll have a better pool of potential materials to survey, since you won't have any quantanium or bores to contend with, although you are going to run across deposits that are too large to handle solo. If you mine here, I'd recommend using the refinery at Her L1 Green Glade Station, since it's a short jump and provides bonus yields to most of the materials you're going to be mining. For the Aaron Halo, you can use the distance reference table from the Cornerstone Group, which shows the exact distances you need to drop out of quantum travel at to land in the belt from each of the refinery stations. You accomplish this by setting a quantum travel destination that crosses over the Aaron Halo, activating quantum travel by holding B, then, when you reach the prescribed distance, you shut off quantum travel by holding B again. The Aaron Halo is made up of eight distinct bands, but, as of now, the material spawn chances are the same across all of the eight bands. I've put a link to this chart in the description, as well as the pinned comment on this video. I recommend using either Crew L1 or Arc L1 as your home base when mining in the belt, since both are close to the belt and provide yield bonuses for the materials you want to be mining. The Yella Asteroid Belt and Lagrange Points can also be mined, although you're much more likely to run into other players or NPC pirates due to the relatively limited areas you're mining in. I recommend you avoid these locations unless you're ready to fend off potential pirates. Once you've found a deposit to mine, it's time to start fracturing. For specifics on how to fracture a deposit, check out episode 3 of my mining tutorial which covers the process of breaking rocks, as well as practical tips for making your mining expedition a little more manageable. I'd encourage you to watch through that episode if you haven't already. To get started, activate mining mode by pressing the M key. Adjust laser power using your mouse scroll wheel. Activate your laser by clicking the left mouse button. And toggle between fracturing and extraction modes using the right mouse button. Clicking your left mouse button will toggle the laser on until you click it again, while holding down the left mouse will activate the laser until the mouse button is released. The laser will automatically deactivate when the rock fractures. As with any type of mining, fracturing a mineable deposit is done by applying enough laser power to fracture the rock, while not overcharging the rock, which will cause it to explode. Large deposits break down into multiple fragments, which can then be broken down further until they're ready to extract. Fragments with a yellow outline need to be broken further, while fragments with a purple outline are ready to extract. Once you've done the first break, only fracture those sub-fragments that include your desired materials. If you get a good break, all of your desired materials could be concentrated in a few fragments, and if you get a bad break, the material will be spread across multiple mixed fragments. If you get a bad break and you find extraction-ready fragments that are more than 50% other material, don't feel bad about leaving that fragment behind and searching for another rock to break. The price of your desired materials could be 4 to 10 times more valuable than the filler material you're leaving behind, so it might make more financial sense to move on to a better rock than to have to waste time heading back to the refinery with a heavily mixed load. Once you've filled up your cargo load, it's time to head to the refinery station. These can be found at any of the L1 stations, as well as her L2. Follow the normal station landing procedure, then store your ship once you get back to the ASOP terminal. After the ship is stored, use the interstation elevator to head to the refinery deck. This is the same elevator system that takes you between the hangars and habs, Galleria, or cargo sections of the station. The refinement process center will be directly across the refinery from the elevator bay on the second floor above the service center. You have two options for handling the raw material you just collected. You can cash in immediately by selling the raw ore at this terminal, or you can set up a refinery order at this terminal which processes the materials to be sold later. There are several refinement methods you have to choose from, but I recommend the Dynex Solventation or, if you're in a hurry, you can use the Fern Exchange. Refined materials sell for almost double what the raw material would sell for, and while I normally recommend refining everything you collect, that also means you're going to need to have a cargo ship to move the materials from the refinery to a trade and development division to sell. If you don't have a cargo hauler, you do have the option to rent one of a few cargo ships for between 40 and 75,000 UEC per day. 
if you don't have the cash to rent a cargo hauler, then it might make sense to sell one or two loads as raw ore, then do the ship rental to move the rest of your orders. When the refinery order is finished, you can transfer them into your cargo ship at this same terminal. Your cargo ship must be large enough to store a full processed order, and no, you won't be able to use the prospector for transporting refined materials. With your ship loaded, you can then fly to one of the major landing zones and navigate the city to the Trade and Development Division, where you can use the trade terminals to sell your refined material. These limitations are based on the current state of the game, but there are mining gadgets that are being introduced soon which will greatly improve the capability of a rented prospector and expand the options for solo miners. These are handheld devices that you can affix to a rock and calibrate to modify its parameters, much like mining lasers and modules, with the added benefit that they are not part of the ship's loadout configuration. They can be transported in your personal inventory and deployed as needed while you're in the field. These mining gadgets are expected to be released with Alpha 3.17, which is expected early in 2022. I'll cover mining gadgets in their own episode as they get closer to release. And there you have it. Everything you need to mine in a rented prospector. If you've got questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below and check the pinned comment on this video for any corrections or additional details. You can connect with me on Twitch, YouTube, Twitter, and Discord by following the links in the description. And last of all, like and subscribe if this video helped you out, because not everyone needs to be a bounty hunter to make money in the verse. <laughs>